Hi folks, welcome back to Meaningful Money. This is probably the most public video I've done so far. There's lots of people down behind me because we're here at Carn Uni. Now this is a, uh, an ancient sort of settlement, apparently the earliest um, ar archaeological findings were from the 5th century BC. Um, but uh, I think it was inhabited until about 500 years ago. And the site is uh, distinguished by something called a, a fogu or a fugu, which is a sort of uh, an underground tunnel, uh, really. Uh, not nobody's sure. I think what those are used for, whether it's sort of ceremonial or whether it's for storing food or whatever. But uh, quite something, really. A couple of thousand years ago, to uh, dig a pretty big tunnel. I'll see if we can go down there for a, for a video in a minute. But to dig a pretty big tunnel through granite is quite a, quite an achievement for 2,000 years ago. But anyway, so this is Carn Uni. Look it up. It's, uh, it's a cracking spot, and my daughters aged 10 and 7, love coming here and playing hide and seek, or they're called 4040, if that means anything to you. Right, short video of this, this is about commodities. Um, we've dealt with the major parts of most portfolios, uh, cash, gilts and bonds, uh, shares and property. For many portfolios that's all there is. But I think uh, for a really good, well-balanced and well-diversified portfolio, there's several other things which ought to be included to a greater or lesser extent. And the first of those is commodities. And remember, each one of these things we include because they behave differently to the others. So uh, commodities behave differently to shares and property. So what are commodities? Well, the very name suggests that commodities really could include anything which is traded. Um, but in investment terms, we tend to think of... Um, physical things, not like shares or bonds which are almost promises really, but physical things. So here's some examples. We could talk about agricultural commodities which are things like corn, soybeans, coffee or sugar, uh, livestock commodities which is cattle um, or even something called frozen pork bellies. Not sure how much I'd get for mine. Quite a lot actually. It's a cracking specimen. Um, energy uh, can be a commodity. So crude oil or natural gas or heating oil. Um, precious metals, so gold or uh, platinum or silver, we'll talk about gold next time. Uh, industry metals, so non-precious metals, things like copper and zinc and tin and aluminium. All of these things are bought and sold uh, on markets around the world. And they behave differently because you imagine industrial metals um, are bought and sold dependent on you know, the world economy. If uh, those things are needed to build more things or to make more electronics or whatever, uh, then the price will go up because they're in demand. Remember, everything is supply and demand when it comes to valuations. So those are commodities. They're basically physical things which you can buy and sell. I'm going to take gold as an, as an example of one of those and deal with it in a little more detail in the next video. Um, but they're all basically things you buy and sell. But realistically, you and I are not going to be able to buy 40,000 tonnes of pork bellies because we probably haven't got enough money and I'm not sure where we would keep them. So like most investments, most ordinary people buy them through funds. Um, either active funds or tracker funds, trackers I've come to uh, in two or three videos time, um, but we buy them through funds and so you can get a com plenty of commodities funds, uh, funds which just deal in gold, uh, funds which do just deal in metals or in agriculturals or our general commodities funds. So that's why we dealt with funds first, because all these things usually for the ordinary investor are held within funds. So anyway, that's commodities, stuff, real physical things which you buy and sell. So next time it's gold, which is an uh, interesting one. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.